man. Wait. Miss McKay. No, oh, yes, Ann. Been expecting you. Come in. Uh, this is Donnie Mitchell. Donnie, this is Miss McKay. How do, ma'am? Well, come in, come in. Can't stand out there all day. How old are you, Donnie? Going on 13. Mighty small for your age, aren't you? No. Uh, I have here the reports of the places he's lived lately. After his father was drowned at sea, he lived with his next of kin, an uncle, Captain My Mitchell of Port Clyde. Captain Mitchell was lost in the big storm of March three years ago. Since then, he's been a ward of the state. Quite a record he's made for himself. Run away three times. Why? Well, I think I can explain. Elkins see. Farm, Waldo County, eight months. What'd you run away for? Didn't like the farm. Mm-hmm. Furnished to Manuel Santos, storekeeper, Waterville, six months, ran away. Why? Didn't like him neither? No. Maybe he won't like it here. Oh, I think he will. It's different. Let him answer it for himself. Well? I don't know. Guess I will. Will what? Run away? No. No, ma'am. Can you cut wood? Yes, ma'am. He's a good boy, Mrs. McKay. He wants to learn, and he needs your guidance. Want to see your room, Donnie? Yes, ma'am. Up there. Door on the right, the top of the stairs. understood I'm only taking the boy on probation. If he's a good boy, I'll keep him. If not, back he goes. Well, I can't help it if he's a state kid and an orphan. All I want is someone to do the chores. Well, Mrs. McKay, I know you're going to like him. He's a fine boy. What oh, you doing up there? Snooping? One thing I can't abide is eavesdropping. Want to hear something? Come down and listen. I don't think you really meant to eavesdrop, Mrs. McKay. You see... He's had sort of a rough time. He wouldn't tell us, but we've had information that the Santos, the Portuguese storekeeper in Waterville, whom Donnie was apprenticed to, treated him badly. Our board's investigating it now. Poor little devil. That's why I brought him to you. You've raised kids of your own. Not gonna raise any more. Got no affection left to pour out on anybody. Sure. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a boy to do the chores. Of course. Say hello to your ma. I haven't seen her lately. I will. Bye. Like your room? Yes, ma'am. Come on down. Let's have a look at you.
Now look, Dottie, we're not going to get anywhere acting like a couple of strange dogs. I ain't no dog. Nobody said you were. You're acting like I was going to chain you up. Nobody's trying to put anything over on you. Just you do your work around here and I'll do my part by you. And anything you don't like, say so, because I will. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Jump here first minute you got here. And get yourself washed up and we'll have some supper. Furnished room in Belfort. It's not bad. If you like furnished rooms. You know, next. I miss it! Kate! <sighs> Out on second! It's a fake for money. Cheer up, dear. It'll turn out all right. Thanks, Mom. I'll try to be over on Saturday. Anne! Anne Freeman! Good morning, Mrs. Thatcher. Are you going by the dock? Oh, yes, Miss Thatcher, get in. Beautiful morning, isn't it? Oh. Yes, I guess. What did you say, Anne? Oh, I haven't slept all night. It's Tom. I'm nearly crazy. He's more than a day overdue now. And that squall night for last. Oh, I tell you. I... Now, Mrs. Thatcher, you shouldn't cross the bridge before you get to it. It's not as bad as you think. Probably everything's all right. They go out in their boats and they say they'll be back. And you wait and you watch. There ain't a woman in this town that ain't lost a husband, a boy, or someone. Oh, Mr. Thatcher's an experienced lobsterman. And it takes more than a little blow to bother a lobster boat. Oh, yes, but I... Now, your husband's a smart seaman. Maybe he ran out the squall and put into Nova Scotia. Dad used to do that. A lot of them do, you know. I suppose. Yes, then, I guess he is. I never thought of that. Sorry, Ann. I got so upset. You'll be in, Mrs. Thatcher. You'll see. Thank you, Ann. Thank you so much. Joe Sanger. Joe Sanger. There's your farm magazine. Oh, thanks. Joe Sanger, Joe Sanger, Mr. Joe Sanger. Joe Sanger, Esquire. That's me, too. At least I got a bill. Holy smoke, who I got for a partner anyway? Me, who do you think? Hey, Hart, look at this. I raised my family on walnuts, say Leroy Helton. Oh, nuts, huh? No, walnuts. Something, huh? Swell. Thought you were a turkey man, Joe. Nah, uh, turkeys you gotta feed. These things, they just drop off and you're rich. Well, just like that, huh? A dime in every walnut? Yeah, sure. No, no, these things you got... These... I hate to disturb a millionaire, Joe, but we still gotta eat. Huh? The groceries. Oh, sure, I almost forget. I get them. I'll see you down at the dock, Joe. I got a few things to do. Okay. Go on. Oh, Ann. Hello, Maud. Well... Wait a minute. 
Breaking an engagement's not going to start a feud, is it? Well, I don't see why it should. Still friends? Still friends, Hart. And you still got that date tonight, huh? Date? Oh, this is Friday, remember? We're going to dinner? Oh, no, Hart. Uh, I have to work tomorrow. Did you change your job? Well, no, why? Well, nothing, only when you made the date originally, you had to work just the same. All right. We've got a date. But just as friends, nothing more. Promise? Absolutely. Talk about nothing but the weather. And local gossip. Give you my word. I'll be around about 7 o'clock. That ring. Hard. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that, really. Since the fellow won't take it back, I guess I'm stuck with it. Unless I find somebody else. Oh. What? Nothing. Changed your mind, have you? Have you changed yours? You know, I wouldn't be any good with a job in town. I'm just a lobster man. I'll never be anything else. You know that. Todd, uh, you could be anything you want. All right, Ann. I'll do it. What? I'll take that job in Bangor. Might be a little rough for a while, but I think we can work it out, don't you? No, Hod. It wouldn't work. And it was unfair of me to ever ask you. Yeah. One minute you say one thing, and I try to do what you want me to I do, and then you... I'm sorry, Hod, but you wouldn't be happy. And after a while, I guess I wouldn't be happy either. Now, look, Ann, don't talk like that. We'd have each other. We could work anything out that way. No, Hart. Marriage is something that has to last. It's... Look, I love you, Anne. And you love me. Don't you? You know you do. Hart, this isn't fair. It's hard for you to stay. Hart, you'll have to give me a chance to think. That's tough luck. I knew someone scared them. Don't hang it on me. They were just feeding out. It's a pretty good job of hunting, though. Maybe they'll come back. Got a lot of good at doing. These are the only shows I had. Aren't you the new fellow up at Mary McKay's? Yeah. A state kid, an orphan. I'm Hod Stillwell. How'd you get over here? Rode out in a skiff. You on this island? Yeah. Well, that's okay, though. You can come over anytime. How'd you learn to handle a gun like that? Well, Uncle Mai taught me. He used to take me gunning. Uncle Mai? 
That wouldn't be Captain Maya Mitchell used to be down at Port Clyde, would it? What's it to you? Nothing. I just mentioned it. My name's Mitchell, too. Donnie Mitchell. Well, I thought there might be a connection. You know, I went to the banks a couple of seasons with Captain Mai. You did? Yeah. Oh, some years ago. I knew your pa, too. Say, he was a pretty good man with a gun, wasn't he? Uncle Mai said he was one of the finest shots in the county. Tried to tell old Farmer Elkins that, but... Guess nobody recollect my pa no more. Now, where did you get an idea like that? There are plenty of people around here who remember your pa. You want to talk to my partner, Joe Sanger? He and your pa were shipmates a couple of years. Sanger? He's a Portuguese, ain't he? Yeah, why? I don't like Portuguese. Ah, oh, now listen, son. Your pa or your uncle my either. I wouldn't let anybody tell them about a fellow. They always went and found out for themselves. Yeah. Well, I gotta be gone. I got some chores to do. Time you get back to the mainland, it's gonna be kind of late for chores, isn't it? The chores can wait. I ain't no horse. Hey, look here. I got a couple of nice birds here. You can use them. See? What do you want for them? Oh, nothing. I just thought maybe Mrs. McKay wouldn't worry so much about the chores if... Well, a couple of nice birds, or a couple of nice birds. Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Come back again sometime. We'll talk about your pa and your Uncle Mai. goodness you've come. Well, I wasn't in the office when your message came. But I got here as fast as I could. What's the trouble? Trouble? It's Donnie. I haven't seen hide and a hair of him since this morning. Here it is, an hour past supper time. Well, didn't he say anything oh, or do I anything? Oh, I scolded him for dilly-dallying with the wood this morning. Then when I went out to call him for dinner, there was the saw broke clean and two and him gone. You don't suppose something's happened? Oh, suppose, suppose. I supposed everything. When he didn't come in for dinner, I thought sure he'd be in by supper. I don't know what to do. That's skiff by our lobster docks? Yeah. Lots have drifted out from the mainland with the tide. Pick it up with a gap, Joe. Pick it up after we unload. There's two lobster and it's still alive. We'll take it into the mainland first time we go in and find out who it belongs to. Santa Maria, what we catch? Johnny! Hey, Jonah, he's one of the way this time. Oh, it's a good thing those lobsters are plugged. 
we'd have hauled you out in pieces. What were you doing in there? I only want a couple of lobsters. Oh, I see. Look, Tony, in this country, lobster's a man's living. You don't rob his pots, and you don't rob his lobster car. I didn't know it was yours. That only makes it worse. A man looks out for his enemies, but he's friends. A man doing that would be sent to jail if you were lucky. A kid like you would be sent to reform school. What would your Uncle Mai have done if he'd caught you doing this? He'd have whale tarnation out of me, I guess. That's what you need, a good thrashing. You can whip me if you want. Oh, I wouldn't lay a hand on you. But I'm going to do the next best thing. Get on the boat. Go on, get aboard, go on! Hello? Is Sergeant Wilson there? Johnny! Where have you been? He's been with me. Well, that's small comfort. Come in here. Another two minutes, we'd have the police looking for you. Johnny, you're soaking wet. Hello, Ann. Yes, he's wet. He uh, had a little accident. He fell in the water. That's a sure way to get wet. Well, now, kite yourself upstairs and get out of those wet clothes before you catch pneumonia. Skedaddle. A lot of problems to raising a child, aren't there, Mary? Child? He's got the brain of a giant. He can think of more ways to devil a person. He wasn't trying to devil you, Mary. He was afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of you. He told me the whole story about breaking the saw. He told me he broke it accidentally. I believe he did. He stayed away because he was just plain afraid to face up and tell you about it. It was only a saw. I know, but uh, I guess it seemed a lot bigger to him. He's pretty sensitive. He hasn't had things very easy. It takes patience with a kid like that. Well, patience ain't my long suit. Kids either want to hit him a lick or arms around. Still hasn't had any supper. Well, that reminds me, Mary, neither have I. No more trouble for two than for one. Mrs. McKay? Yes? Now that everything's turned out all right, I think I'll be getting back to Bellport. Sorry you had to come all the way for nothing, Ann, but thanks. Night. Night. Oh, Ann, do you have to go right away? Well, it's a long drive, and I want to get in before too late. It was successful, though. When's the wedding? Nothing like asking, is there? No. I'm afraid there's not going to be one. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Quiet. I guess maybe she just doesn't want to marry a lobster man. Smart girl, maybe. What are you looking for? Dandelion wine. Did you make any this year? Of course not. Get out of there. Okay. And let a man come in out of a cold night and not give him anything? All right, all right. It's on the other side. Don't pour me any, though. Of course not. Think I want the ladies to eat after me? Oh, Mary. You're not letting Donnie worry you, are you? Oh, of course not. He's just as nice and quiet as a two-year-old bull. It takes a lot of handling. The boy's had a pretty tough road to hoe. So is everybody else. Life's no clam bake. Maybe. 
And I could use that boy on my boat Saturdays, Mary. Pay him two bits an hour. Smart, aren't you? You and him cook this up? No, I just thought of it. Not a bad idea either. Might make enough to pay for that saw. Said anything about paying for a saw? Donnie? Donnie? Yes, ma'am. Lie down now. Supper's about ready. He's going with us Saturday. You'll have to get him up early, Mary. We'll leave around five. All right, all right. He'll be on time. Hey, wait a minute. Don't waste it. Look at this, huh? Sure. <laughs> Monkey business. Wake up in the middle of the night, break your back all the day. Lobster, huh? Let go the bow line, Joe. Donna, you cast off the stern. Yes, sir. Mr. Whitmore, isn't that Mrs. Thatcher? That's right, Miss Freeman. Mr. Thatcher's boat was wrecked in a storm off Hazlitt's Rock. His body was found last Friday. Oh. Be able to go with us next week, Donnie? Sure. Got a lot of chores to do for Mr. McKay. I'll do them. Every one of them. A lot of wood to chop. I'll cut it. Honest, I'll do it. Might be a little tough. Just with an axe. Now that you broke the saw. Yeah. But I'll do it. Hi, hi, what do you think? What? With one of these, I plant an acre of potatoes in one day. Maybe I get two. Do the whole thing in half a day, huh? Who wants to plant potatoes? Hey, who do you think? Pretty good. How many? Six. What a big one. I gotta get me a farm so far away from the ocean I never smell bait again. I go to, to Connecticut. Doesn't it smell in Connecticut? No, nobody smell in Connecticut. Stay on the boat. Hey, Hud, you 
got something. Maybe whale. <laughs> Hold on to him, Donnie. Bring him in. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. Don't let him get any slack in your line, huh? That's a boy. <laughs> hey, he really has got something. You okay? Yeah. Any help? No. I can get him. What you think, Hot? Shark, maybe? No, I don't think so. Doesn't fight like a shark. More like a halibut. It won't kill. Come on, keep him coming. You got him, Donnie. Bring him in. Did you see it? There he is. Holy smoke! It is a halibut. Big as halibut rock. Santa Maria, son of a gun. What a fish! Lobsters in four. That comes, uh, that comes 5780. Yeah, that's a pretty good day. Not bad. Mighty fine halibut. You know there's biting. That depends on who's fishing for him, Nick. Yeah. Uh, you haul him in? No. Did Joe get him? No, oh, it was my new partner, Donnie Mitchell. He got him. Well, say, son, that's some fish. Mitchell, huh? You don't have to be no relation to old Captain Mai Mitchell or Johnny Mitchell now, would you? Captain Mai was my uncle. John was my father. Well, Donnie, there's your share. Two bits an hour, one and a quarter. Dish is four fifty. That makes five dollars and seventy-five cents. There you are, cash on the barrel head. Gosh, I never heard that much. I had too good of a time. A lot of money, son. What you aim to buy with it? I'm going to get me a brand new saw. <laughs> Miss Ann! Hurry, Miss Ann. Hello, Donnie. Hi. Look at the fish I caught. Oh. Hello, Hello Mark. Ann. Joe. Hello, Miss Ann. Say, that is really some fish, isn't it? <laughs> Did you catch it, Donnie? Sure. All by himself. We don't give him no help, not even one little bit. It's a halibut. Weighs 53 pounds. And look at the money. Five dollars and 75 cents. Hey, that's a lot of money. I think I should take up fishing. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> you can ship with us. I can use another hand aboard, providing you can cook. Well, I won't guarantee it. No, uh, no fishing, Miss Ann. Buy yourself a farm, a raised potato. <laughs> <laughs> Will you go fishing with us? I think about it, Donnie. Look, you go up on the dock and get in my car and we... But I gotta help Joe wash down the deck. I think Joe can do it alone. Oh, I'm not so sure. Look, I want to talk to Hans. You go up and wait for me. Yes, Yeah, and I wish you hadn't done that. What? Boy just had the biggest time of his life. You took some of the edge off it for him. Well, I'm sorry, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You shouldn't have taken him out with you. What could happen to him, going out with me? On a boat in the open sea, a lot of things. <laughs> if you want to look at it like that, he could fall down in the backyard and break his neck. Just going out on the boat. Oh, no, no Hod. I was brought up here, too, and I know. Half the people in this town have lost somebody at sea. I know, Ann. You that... know. But do you really know? You go out there. But ask the women that have to sit at home and wait and watch and pray. Ask them if there's any danger on the open sea. Ann, are you talking about Donnie or about yourself? I'm talking about my responsibility. If something happened to Donnie, I'd never forgive myself. Suppose he wants to go. And I want to take him. Well, then you'll force me to move him somewhere else. I'm sorry, Hart, but that's the way it's got to be. Hi, Hart. We stay here all night? I'm hungry. Hello, kids. How are you? Good. Hey, 
Hey, what you do way out here? How come you're not in church, huh? How come you ain't? Me? <laughs> Six o'clock I am there. Don't you worry about Joe. Church don't start till 10. What you mean? We got six o'clock mass, seven o'clock mass, eight o'clock mass. We got plenty mass. Oh, the other church, huh? What you doing? Uh, heading up the traps. All the time, heading up the traps. You take my advice, kid. You want to be fisherman? Don't do it. You get yourself a nice farm. Hey, kid. Come here. I'll show you something. Look, mink, find fortune in fabulous furs. Something, huh? I'd rather fish. Wait, you don't see the whole thing. Now, this fella, he sell you mama mink and papa mink for um, $100. I like fishing better. OK, well, OK, now look. When baby mink, they grow up, they make coat like that, see? Don't like girls. Don't look at the girl, look at the coat. You know how much that coat costs? $10,000. Think of that. Gee, that's more than a lobster bowl. Yeah, you betcha. Joe. Hi, how are you? Hi, Donnie. How are the traps coming? Sure, sure, they coming. Pretty soon they all fix. It's a mighty fine house you got there, Hod. Yeah. Hod, hey, I... Joe. I'll get the head of the parlor too small on this one. OK, I get him. Hod, I got something to ask you. What's that, Donnie? Well, I figured, well, that is, well, look, you and Joe live here alone, I figured. You figured what? Well, if I was here every day, I could do the chores for you and then free on the boat every day. You mean move in with me? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm sorry, Donnie, I couldn't do that. Miss McKay wouldn't mind. I paid her for the saw. Well, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I don't think the... School's out in a couple of weeks. Could I work steady for you all summer? Hey, hi, that's a good idea. The kid, maybe Never he could... mind the idea. Let's go, Joe. We're going out. I'm sorry, Don. We go out? Yeah. Wasn't I all right yesterday? Yesterday you said I was your partner. Well, that's right, Donnie. I did say that yesterday. But something's happened. We'll have to break that partnership. Fishing's not so good right now, and I... I'll bet that in the sand! I'll bet you! She had nothing to do with it. Shove her off, Joe! so Donnie won't see it when he comes in. Put it in the pantry. Martin should be sending the ice cream over any minute now. I hope Donnie doesn't see him. I took care of that. I sent him down to the shoemakers to pick up a pair of shoes I'm having healed. I told the shoemaker to keep him there around 5 o'clock. Oh. Does he suspect anything? Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, I want this to be a surprise. The poor little tyke probably hasn't had a birthday party since his uncle died.
help you? Help? Figuring on taking a trip? Uh, no. Say, ain't you the fellow up to Mary McKay's? Yeah. Say hello to Mary for me, will you? Tell her Dan, the taxi man. Looks like it's new to me. I ain't ever used it, honey. What do you want to trade for it? I want to sell it for $7.50. Gonna do something special you want that much money for? Mm-hmm. Give you $4 for it. I gotta have $7.50. Couldn't come out on it at that price. I'll take four. said they wouldn't be ready till five. Well, all right. We'll get them later. Now go up to your room and stay there till I call you for supper. And I want you going out anymore. Rat that shoemaker. He hasn't got the gumption to pour water out of a boot. Martin from the drugstore. Can I see you a minute? Shh, come in. He's upstairs now. Well, would it be all right if I put him in containers and bring it over after they sit down to sleep? Yes, table? yes. Only for heaven's sake, go now for his age and suspect something. Yeah. I'll be back in plenty of time.
He isn't up there. He isn't there. I'll bet he went back after your shoes. I told him to stay in his room. Looks like she's gonna blow some hot. Uh, not much. A little rain squall over by Hazlitt's Rock probably won't come in this far. Let's put the boat on the mooring. It's him, all right. When I wave, he see us and turn. Suppose he's looking for us? Oh, he's taking a joyride. That kid is crazy about boats. Hey, he's headed out to sea. <laughs> he's a funny kid. I don't he's like, don't like drinking. Joe. Let go of that mooring. Let go. I just tie her up. Let it go again. The kid not come this far. Hey, what's that? I thought I see something. There he is. Son of a gun, that kid. Pick up signs! Hey, get a line, quick! He's still there. Take the wheel. When you turn around as close to him as you can. Don't let the sea take you into the rocks. Better start your turn now!
Get the grip on the rocks. Give it more power. Swing around the top of Joe. Santa Maria, how we do that? I don't know. We were born to be hung, I guess. takes a surprise out of the surprise party, doesn't it? I couldn't keep the kids waiting any longer. They were starving. Do you suppose he could have gone back after your shoes? Oh, fiddlesticks. He could have done that in 30 minutes. We should have told him about the party. Oh, that would have spoiled everything. I wanted to see the expression on his face. When... Mm. That's trouble. We were having too much fun ourselves. Donnie! He was with you. Yeah, again. Donnie! And wet! Yeah, he fell in the water again. Every time you do that, you get wet. Now, get out of those wet clothes before you get pneumonia. Hurry now. Hurry. I forgot his new suit. This is quite a setting to walk into after what's happened. That's what I want to know. What has happened? Come on, I'll tell you. Look in. Donnie stole Nick Driver's outboard and capsized off Hazlitt's rock. It's just a miracle he's here. He was trying to run away. Run away? Where? Oh, I don't know. Boston, out of the state. What difference does that make? The important thing is he'll keep right on doing it unless something's done. But I don't understand. Look, Ann. Donnie's a fisherman's kid. He's got fishing in his blood. You bring him to a fishing town where all he sees is boats and you put up a sign, keep off. What do you expect him to do? I've told you, Hot. The welfare board holds me responsible. It's my duty. I know. You told me that. You told me lots of things. There's one thing you didn't tell me, or I was too stupid to see it. You're afraid, Anne. You're afraid of the sea. You're scared to death of it. All right. Suppose I am. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to say it. It's a terrible thing for you to fight, but it's affecting other people's lives, Anne. It's affecting Donnie's life. That's not fair. The boy can go good or he can go bad. It's up to you to make the decision. Why you don't do what I say in the book? Hey, Ad, come here. What's up, family? No, that's the trouble. You think maybe Papa don't like Mama, or Mama don't like Papa? Maybe they're both named Charlie. Oh, no, this one's name is... Ad! Ad! Hi, Donnie. Mr. Kay said it was all right for me to come down and see you after school today and tell you that Miss Hans said it was all right with the state for me to work for you on the boat. I'm glad to hear that, Donnie. You mean you let me work for you again? Well, there's just one thing we've got to get settled. What's that, Hod? Nick Driver's boat. We're going to pay for that. That's okay. Miss McKay, she already paid it. Donnie. Do you think it's right for somebody else to pay for your mistakes? Nick Driver put a lot of store by that boat. If he'd reported to the police that you took it, you might have been sent to reform school. Well, if you'll take me on your boat and let me work. Mm-mm. Would you want a partner that didn't pay his debts? That's what I mean. If you let me work Saturdays till school's over, then I can work for you every day and pay back every cent of it. Honest, I will, Hod. Well, that sounds reasonable. I'll work hard and I'll do all my chores. Every one of them. I will, Hod. Well, start Saturday morning at 5.30. Oh, thanks, Hod. Gee, thanks. I ain't been home yet. I gotta tell Miss McGay. That's terrible. That's terrible. What's eating you? You're right, Hart. They both named Charlie. <laughs> Nothing to do but to wait, I guess. Here he comes. You be sure he's the boy now before you accuse him of anything. Miss McKay! Miss... He's the boy, all right. Donnie, come here. This is Mr. Harris from the Sheriff's Office. And this is Mr. Hopkins. He says you sold him a camera, did you, Donnie? Tell me the truth. Yes. Where did you get it, Donnie? Martin's Drug Store. Did Mr. Martin give it to you? No. Then you just took the camera when no one was looking and went and sold it to Mr. Hopkins here for four dollars. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Oh, Donnie. Mrs. McKay, oh. I'll have to take him to Bellport and turn him over to the juvenile authorities. Donnie, 
I won't tell you not to take this hard. It's bitter hard. Just as we were beginning to understand each other. Bonnie, I'll do all that I can to help you. Don't tell Hart. But Hart will want to help us. Don't tell him. Please, promise you won't tell Hart. I promise. We won't tell Hart, Donnie. I promise. Fourteen and a half. Bet on the dot for this, Les. Okay, boss. Did you find him, Joe? No. Nobody home. The house is all closed up. Closed up? Miss McGillicuddy at the post office say Mary McKay moved to Portland. She's going to stay with her brother. Portland? That's funny. The kid didn't say anything about going away. Well, maybe he forget. I'll pick up the mail. Let's go. Silver Fox Farm. That's yours. Oh, yeah. What's he say, Hot? The driving looks more like chicken tracks. He says the state shifted him to a farm in Ferris. Oh, a farm. That's good. Maybe he get a job for me. <laughs> he says, I wanted you to know why I couldn't be there on Saturday. It's kind of lonesome here on the farm. I don't get to go out much. Tell Joe hello. Tell Joe hello, huh? That's good. Hey, the kitty's okay, huh? No. You know, it's, it's funny Mary McKay would leave like that. Box 317 Ferrison. Doesn't say who he's with. He's a kid, he don't think. Box 317 Ferriston. Any farm in Ferriston would be out on an RFD. Hope it's a good farm. And hey, what they grow on farm in Ferrist? Box 317. There's no RFD. Don't get to go out much. Hey, Joe. Stay to the westward of Little Spoon Island. Let's head for Bellport. Bellport? What we do there? I want to find out something. Donnie this morning. Oh? How was he? He didn't seem very happy. Where is he? Didn't he tell you? He said he was on a farm outside Ferriston. But he gave a box number in town. 
Oh. Well, is that right? Yes. A farm not far from Ferriston. What's the name of these people Donnie's staying with? I'd like to see him. Well, you ought to know. You're responsible for him. You put him there. Where is he? I can't tell you that. You can't or you won't? I promised that I wouldn't. Promised who? I thought when you decided to let Donnie come and work on my boat that you'd beaten this fear of yours, but I guess you haven't. All right, you said you'd take him away, so now you have. Hard, I didn't. Please, you've got to believe me. That had nothing to do with it. Where is he? I just can't tell you. All right, I'll have to find out my own way. Hard, wait a minute. I know you don't believe me, but I've told you everything I can. Now I'm warning you. If you keep on, you're only going to hurt the boy. Hot! Sit down in a chair. Now, ain't that nourishing? I ain't seen you fellas in a dog's age. Wonder you wouldn't come and see a man sometime. Well, if you don't cork yourself in that chair once in a while, what you hide there, huh? Oh, you know, <laughs> sitting at a desk all the time. Sure, big millionaire, counting your money. Millionaire? Listen, with taxes what they are and working hours in the day getting fewer all the time. All right, all right, you fellas need some. No, Josh, this is something else. You're quite a political figure around here. Figure? Huh? National committee men? State delegate, honorary fire chief, candidate for select man. Ain't it amazing the titles and badges a fellow assumes for the good of the community? We don't tell nobody, Josh. Why, you, you Cape Verde sardine fisherman. I thought you was going to go to farming. Put it quick now, you see. I want to ask you something, Josh. Shoot. Do you suppose you could use your connections to find out who holds box 317 in Ferriston? Ferriston, sure. 317. Didn't fall for one of them matrimonial ads, did you? Uh, Jenny, get me a post office in Ferriston. Bill, uh, Bill Murray. Ah. Yeah. No thanks. Good ones. No obligation to vote. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Bill. Uh, Josh Hovey. Great. Yeah? Yeah? You better well. Uh, say, Bill, do you know offhand who rents box 317? One seven. What? <laughs> no, no, just for a friend. Yeah. Well, well, thanks, Bill. Sure do, yeah. Box 317. That's the state reform school. The what? Josh, do you remember Johnny Mitchell? Johnny? Sure. We shipped with him, didn't we, Joe? On the old Maya Mitchell schooner, the uh, Emily T, wasn't it? Sure, I forget the Emily T. That's the one. Johnny's boy is in this reform school at Ferriston. I want you to help me get him out. That's a tall order from reform school. What could you do with him, even if you got him out? Adopt him. Adopt him? Yeah. You want to help me? Hard. You can have the boot yard if you want it. As a matter of fact, I'll take it on one condition. If that chair goes with it. I 
have already made the arrangements to be buried in it. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Couldn't ask you any more, Josh. Thanks very much. Well, it's nice to see you. Nice Stop to see you again. Island. You bet I yes, will. Sir. Yes. Goodbye, Josh. Bye-bye, Joe. Hey, it's a good politics cigar, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to drop in again now, boys. Jenny, get me Hank Wilson in Ferriston. Oh, no, better yet, get me Claude Lutz in Bellport, the uh, county courthouse, I think. Yes. Okay, Charlie. You got a pen, you got a my house. Now, do what the book say. It's a nice boat. Yeah. <laughs> well, Han, it took time, like I told you, and I may have to vote for Judge Tate next year. But I got you hearing. For when? Tuesday. That's the 10th, ain't it? Courthouse in Bellport. It's not going to be easy, Han. That kid was arrested for stealing. He stole a camera and sold it. Oh. He's a ward of the state, and not too good a record. If you take my advice, Hod, you'll get all the people you can on your side. You'll need plenty of help. I got in all the licks I could. Tate's a tough old customer, but he's honest. Mm. Well, thanks, Josh. I guess the best we can do is try. Like your place. All this did envy the fellow who had an island. Wanna sell? Not a chance. You better stick to this. This is for sale. You don't think I'd own it, do you? Well, I guess I'd better be moving on back. Shove off, boys. Hey, Josh, how much that cost? The boat? No, who wants that? The whistle. Go <laughs> on, Josh, thanks again. <laughs> Goodbye, Josh. Goodbye. to meet us here. If he had to wait, he probably went inside where he could sit down. Hard, what about this Ann Freeman? Is she in line? I don't know. I, I don't see how she could stand in the way of an adoption, but I just don't know, Josh. How are you? Fine. I want you to meet a friend of mine, a fine fellow. Mr. Stillwell, this is Judge Tate. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sit down. Miss Freeman? I'm Judge Tate. Just sit down, please. As this is more or less of a family affair, I don't think we need to be so formal. Miss Freeman, will you sit here? Mr. Still, why don't you move in a little closer? I'm sure she won't mind. I usually handle these matters in my chambers, but I have the boy in there, and I don't want to arouse any false hopes of him. This is Mr. Stilwell's petition to adopt Donald Mitchell, a ward of the state of Maine, 
sentenced to the State Reform School on June 3rd of this year. Now, Mr. Stilwell, since you're a single man and it's rather unusual for a bachelor to adopt a child, I wonder if you'd start by giving me some of your reasons. Well, I, I know this boy very well. I knew his father and, and his uncle. And I'm sure that I can give him more advantages than the State Reform School. We won't go into a discussion of our state institutions, sir, which have a remarkably fine record, and whose problems I feel certain you are in no position to discuss. I beg your pardon. Are you financially able and prepared to care for the boy? I, I think so. I'm a lobsterman. I own my own home, my own boat. And, of course, I haven't got any big bank balance, but I make a pretty good living. Am I too late? Madam, this is a private hearing. If you are not an interested party, I... I'd like to know who's more interested than I am. Johnny Mitchell lived in my house. Mary McKay. Well, I didn't recognize you. Hello, Walter. Come around in, Mary. I didn't mean to disturb your court, Oh, uh, right? we're just discussing a matter. Mr. Stowell here has requested the state to permit him to adopt young Mitchell. Well, why shouldn't he? It's the best thing could happen to him. It's about time somebody took an interest in that boy. He's been moved around from pillar to post. And... Now, wait a minute, Mary. Wait a minute, nothing. That boy's going to get a square deal if I have to set fire to the courthouse, and you're not going to stop me. Mary, if now, you'll Walter, just sit in with us and listen. I've known you since you were knee-high to a grasshopper, and I've always liked you. But I'm warning you. If you stand in the way of this boy getting into a good home with a boy that understands him, I'll... Mary, the court can only listen to both sides and try and decide what's best for the boy's welfare. I'm not opposed to the adoption. You mean I came all the way from Portland for nothing? What'd you send for me for? Will you please sit down? We still have no expression of opinion from the welfare board on the subject, Miss Freeman. Your Honor, the Welfare Board felt that it was better to raise Donnie Mitchell for some inland occupation. So we sent him to several inland homes and farms. We were wrong. Every attempt we made to distract him from the sea resulted in some insubordination. Yes, go on. There just seemed to be something so deep-rooted so strong and compelling about this, this calling for the sea that it was useless to fight against it. I've tried and failed. Donnie needs love, guidance from someone he trusts. He needs it especially now after what he's been through. I'm sure, if given these things, he can be raised to be a good citizen in a useful and honorable trade. The board recommends the petition be granted. Well, Your Honor... Let us then... not jump to any conclusions. I am in complete sympathy with your views, but I have a very grave responsibility in a case like this. And before I can make any decision, I must know what the boy's feelings are. Frightened of Donnie? These are all old friends. You know Mr. Stilwell, Miss Freeman, Mrs. McKay. Now, Donnie, Mr. Stilwell wants you to come and live with him. He wants to adopt you, make you a son. Would you like that? No. Donnie. Don't you want to come and live with Joe and me? Work on the boat every day? Be my partner? No. Why? I got reasons. Uh, excuse me, Mr. George. Is it okay if I talk? Yes. Donnie, you come to live with Hart and Joe, 
And Joe, he no buy the farm. He no raise mix. He stay with you. We fish every day. Okay, Donnie? No. Donnie, come here. Come here, I want to talk to you. Don't you like Hard anymore? Yes. And why don't you want to go and live with him and be on his boat again? Because I went to reform school, that's why. Because I stole a camera. I knew that, son. You did? Sure. And you didn't care? Of course not. But I done it when you told me never to, Hard. I know, Donnie. You made a mistake, but you paid for it. We all make mistakes sometimes. The important thing is not to make them again. Keep on. 